We're rolling. Cool. Uh, six six. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. We are rolling. Rolling We're here. right We're now. Live. <laughs> We're doing a thing. Yeah. We're doing a podcast. It's so um, weird. You guys, uh, I'm going to adjust the camera real quick uh, before I even we get into any conversation. Sure. You guys probably don't know who we are. That's fine. Um, yeah. Hopefully we can prove to be somebody that's worth knowing. Um, but I'm Edwin Cabrera. I'm Chris Martin, not to be confused with Coldplay. Uh, I'm my own person. so I always confuse you for Chris Martin from Coldplay. Yeah, everyone does, you know. Yeah. Um, his, also, his name is also Critta. Um, so yeah, I call so him he Krita. might he might address I'm me as that. Ninety nine, so. I'm hundred percent. I'm gonna call him Krita. So if that gets confusing, just remember I call him Krita. Yeah, um, I am my background and why we're making this podcast. So I'm a filmmaker. Um, I've, I guess that's like the only thing I've ever done that I was kind of good at a little bit, and so I sort of stuck to that. Um, and I'm also a really big music head, and so. I was not good at that at all, but I appreciate good music. Um, also, I'm, I when I dress the camera, I remember I'm like walking away from like I gotta stop doing that. But um, <laughs> we're, so we're new at this. So, yeah, we're we're um, just getting used to this. But um, one of my biggest interests, and I just love watching like old like videos from like the '90s and like Hype Williams type videos, and um, so I, I guess. My focus when I make when it comes to film is, is music videos and sort of that kind of stuff, um, and eventually you know that you know transferred over to sort of what we're doing together. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I'm Chris. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm a graphic designer by trade. Uh, also a music person. I actually um, I'm an ex uh, label person. Worked at a label for a long time. Uh, so pretty much started a company with Edwin uh, and we put out hip hop records yeah. that we want to do. So. And so our company is called Grindhouse Recordings. Um, and so that's a, a hip hop label that we, when we first started the label it was sort of like a Lynn, we were aiming to make it a Boston Lynn centric thing. Like just from this Massachusetts region. But I think the scope of that is sort of like, we kind of just like took on any sort of artist that we believe is, yeah. worthy of being heard and listened to and kind of just try to represent them uh, any way we could. We're also, definitely. so this podcast is called The Grind. And so it's, we took that name from Grindhouse Recordings, obviously, but also um, we're going to sort of steal this podcast and not just talking about music, but also talking about like, you have this passion for something, right? And it may not be what everybody else is passionate about, but you have this specific passion. Yeah. How do you make it happen? Like, yeah. How do you make uh, it happen? And this is, yeah, so we're definitely going to talk about, like, you know, like, our, like, day-to-day label stuff. Um, there's a lot of bullshit with it, uh, to be very honest. Uh, people think it's, like, easy. It's not. Uh, we've been at this for three years. Yeah. And we're fucking rich. We're not so rich. rich. Uh, yeah. So no, we have to, like... Well, Grindhouse it has a symbolism like the grind. Like we're dudes that like we have to like work jobs in order to do this. Like it's not something we do all the time. It's also kind of an homage to Grindhouse type films. Um, that too. You know, but also just grinding. Yeah. Um, and so this podcast, like I said, like we're gonna be talking about how to you know have a regular normal everyday job um, and make things work the way you <coughs> want it to work in terms of. Um, you know, your passions, what you're yeah. passionate about. And the thing that makes it interesting all is that um, we're in it. Like, it's not like we're successful. And so, like, no, you know, if we're you're looking, like if you're if you're looking to listen to a podcast about two rich dudes talking about like, how they've made it. Yeah. <laughs> and like, this is not it. It's not. No, it's not that. This is not the podcast. Uh, but, but if you're trying <laughs> to listen to two dudes talk about how they're grinding to try to get to that point and you want to climb with us. Yeah. This is the podcast. for you. And we're also we're going to interview. um like artists that we like, um, you know, artists that are local, um, also like, you know, industry people. Um, yeah, we just want like yeah. anyone that likes hip hop can be on yeah. this show. Any, any this information, podcast. any information that we feel like is good information for us to get and that we would seek out just in our everyday lives. Yeah. That's what we want to bring to this channel. So yeah. not only are we receiving that information by interviewing various people that we want to talk to in order to grow our personal grant, our brand and our yeah. company and what we're trying to do. Absolutely. It, this may not be the same sort of company or thing that you're trying to do. 
Um, but if I mean, if you're into music, definitely. If you're yeah. just trying to start your own thing, that there might be some sort of or just uh, like starting a business. Like yeah. if you're starting a business, you might want to check this out. So. Fuck, we're working on everything. I'm working yeah. on my credit. My credit's terrible. Yeah, I'm trying to bring that <laughs> Fucking up. Credit, dude. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But also, like, there's another side of our business as well that is we actually make more money on the other side of our business, mm-hmm. uh, which is hilarious. Uh, so we have a company called Antihero. Um, it's essentially where we can we design and do film work for people. Uh, and a lot of that money goes back into the label. So, uh, you know, if you know anyone that needs design work or film stuff, hit us up. So, which I guess is like, um, that could be even point number one is, is like the way we have not just one company, but we got two companies. You got one company that really focuses on what we're trying to do, what we're actually trying to do, which is groundhouse recordings. Like this is like the thing that we've, you know, um, created first because we have a grand idea for what that should be but then we also have uh anti-hero which is these are the skills that we have yeah and so these are the skills that we know can make us money yeah even if it's not in the thing that we are trying to do and so that's why there's grindhouse recordings and then there's anti-hero yeah and it's sort of like one side is like investment and then the other side is where we make money or you could consider the investment the area where we lose money uh but it's okay by the way if you guys have any sort of business advice for us because like, like we'll take we're it. always or like, money if you just want to give us money we oh, will geez. take your money but we're not like no we that. won't we're not that desperate no I mean, we won't <laughs> we're, maybe we are but i was trying to make it seem like we're kind of not but we are well, we are so we'll take it let's be uh, real you know but but if, if like, you know, whatever advice we offer you, if you have if you feel like you do have a rebuttal or um, you want to add more to it or you had your own questions or you just have some deep insight that we are completely missing. Um, we should also make this like we are making this interactive for you all. So, like, yeah, um, you can reach out, out to us if you have if you like the podcast and also if you have things to add to it. Leave a comment. Yeah. I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. Gives us something to talk about. Give and us also, a review. Like, we we want to like. Just learning what we're all curious about is good to just understand certain aspects of what we're trying to do. So yeah. any sort of background that you guys want to throw in, if we, if we miss anything, just let us know. Definitely. Because we're definitely new at this. Um, we actually tried doing this podcast uh, a couple years ago. We just weren't consistent about doing it. Uh, I would. It was a failed attempt at a podcast. Yeah. like it. I feel like this one's better. Oh, dude. Like, we just, we're five minutes in. <laughs> we, can't, just we, can't better, we can't judge off a know? five minute, dude. Uh, we'll see. Well, time will it's tell. Just better. It's time just better. will tell. Just, no, it's better. You're jumping, you're jumping the gun. Uh, I like the other podcast. I mean, this is like so. I would call it just the other pilot because it's there yeah, was only like one a, or two episodes. Yeah. But um, so I don't even want to talk about it that much because we might redo that podcast just again. Here. Yeah, just rename yeah. it. So there might. Be I think we're be, gonna just rename it. Yeah. And just yeah. There might even be an edit point. This is the re. We don't want to talk about re pilot. Right yeah. now, <laughs> this is the repilot essentially. <laughs> yeah, um, um, the podcast we always wanted to make yeah. is this one. Yeah, so cool. So what's up? None. I mean, uh, so we talked about the label. Um, do you want to talk about like your new car that you just got? Uh, so I financed a new car. Um, that's a key word because. Um, <laughs> So it's not your car, but it's... I feel like most people are doing... That. I've, I've, so I have... I wouldn't call myself anti-capitalist, but I definitely wouldn't call myself a capitalist at the same time. I'm broke, um, and I'm on the grind. So yep. uh, I kind of hate money in that aspect because it's always hard for me to get. I haven't been blessed with that uh, knowledge of how to quickly like bring in money or find some sort of like you know people to pay off my bullshit. Um, yeah. So uh, I... When it comes to money and... Uh, debt and all those things, I hate it. And I try to hate, I try to stay away from it as much as possible because I don't want to acquire more debt. I'm fresh out of college. Not, well, not fresh. I'm not, it's been five years now, but uh, the, only the, five the, wounds, years. the wounds are very much still fresh. Like that, that, you know, the thousands of dollars are still hanging over my yeah. head. So it still feels fresh. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, I, I've always rode in ship boxes because uh, that's all I could afford to really get. Um, and I always try to avoid digging myself into any deeper debt. Uh, and also my credit was bad. Just a slew of things that has led me to not um, buy a new car, which is something I desperately need. So 
Well, it's a bit. It's a big purchase. Yeah, you know, it's not like. So here's how why I made that purchase. I wouldn't even be in a new car right now if I didn't have to be in a new car right now. But that sort of just happened naturally because I was last week I was pulling into work and I drive my mom's minivan. Um, she gifted that to me because she loves me and uh, it's not you know that that meant a lot to me that she gifted me her minivan. Um, even though it's a piece of shit, it's like a twenty. It's but like you can a, fit so much film equipment in that oh, van. Oh yeah, that's why I loved it. Uh, that's why like, I totally loved it. But uh, like, so it's a two thousand four Dodge Caravan. Um, looks like shit. My mom's not exactly the best driver, so the like the bumpers, like all sorts of fucked up. I'm not <laughs> sure what she hit. Hopefully, it wasn't a person. Um, but um, oh, before that, I had a Subaru Outback, and so the Subaru Outback I loved also. It also could store a bunch of uh, film equipment, so I loved it for that. But the head gasket blew. I paid, I think, seventeen hundred for it. It lasted me a year exactly, and then it just ran to a slew of issues. Like a, like just you talk about like wasting money when you buy a used car and you it's don't know like what the fuck you're throwing doing. Throwing money away all when you the don't time. know what the fuck you're doing and what the fuck you're getting. That that's a money pit. You want to talk about saving money? Don't buy a used car unless you know what don't, you're getting yourself into. Don't fucking into do it because don't do it. Holy shit! This past year has been traumatizing. Um. I, the Subaru Outback was great for about five months, and then it started running to all sorts of issues. Like it would, and also it would run into these issues freaking quickly. Like, like at the worst like time, snowball, also, like snowball, like, it, it like just, a bunch of different shit. It would just like something would just happen at the worst possible time, and then um, you know I'd have to deal with it. And yeah. so the Subaru Outback went through those issues. Then the head gasket blew, which was like, okay, I can't do anything now. It's just dead. And then my mom gave me the minivan. The minivan then had a whole slew of issues. So this is two used cars in a year that's just been running through all sorts of issues. Overheating, tires popping all the time. I thought maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the world's worst driver. So stay the fuck away from me if you see me on the road. <laughs> um, but I like two used cars in a year and I've probably spent uh, well over like two grand on just um, the, the repair fees. It's, it's funny because like if you think about it, if you spent like what you spent on like – like fixing it, yeah. like that would have been like a down payment on a new car. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I'm, that's my point. Like, you know what I mean, sometimes like, you're just like trying to save money, and in the end, you end up losing a ton of it. Yeah. Um. So that's exactly what happened to me. And so at this point, like I'm traumatized by buying, but the the prospect of buying a new another used car. Um. And so as I was driving into work last week, I pull into a parking garage. As I'm parking my car, my my mom's caravan, um, <laughs> the, the the steering wheel locks up. I'm trying to pull into a space and the steering wheel locks up. And so I can only go straight. And so I'm like, holy shit, fuck. Like, how do I move this thing? And so I ended up just like really forcing it into a turn and then got into a space. And then I got out and I was like, uh, well, that's clearly not very safe to drive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably going to die. Probably shouldn't that. have done that. You know? Um, so, uh, and then as I'm walking, I noticed that like, there's just a trail of coolant just like leaking around the parking garage. Like, you know, from the moment I, my the wheels locked up to like, me parking there's just like a trail of coolant um and i knew immediately that was gonna be you haven't boat. you haven't had the car that long no it's like, been three months and then i spent probably a thousand on fixing it yeah and then i just like i i just um, it just killed me inside and i was just like you know what fuck it let's try to get a new car yeah it's kind of funny so like when when we went so i went with edwin to like look at cars you were you were a trooper about that, by the way. Thank you so much. Like, well, it's like, dude, I know, I understand. Yeah. Like, we, like, I feel like we, we definitely go through the same struggles. So I'm like, yeah. I know, like, like That's shit's awful, and uh, yeah. you know, Befriend you know, somebody that identifies with. Yeah, you. I'm like, like yeah, I gotta help help this dude out because I know how he feels. Um, but it was just funny because like we were like looking at cars. And the first thing Edwin would do is just blast the music. And the dude would like try to like tell him about the car. Like and he's like just blasting the music. So the dude's just like yelling about the car, like <laughs> ridiculous. Uh that's very important to me, obviously, because like that's like music yeah. is uh a huge part of why I'm still alive. So um, you know, I, love I agree. Music. You know, uh like definitely. Uh it was just funny because it was like the first thing you would do to like getting into the car. You would turn the car on, bump the radio. Oh yeah, like gotta gotta make even, sure. It, I, like I test drove nothing. Like, yeah, I wouldn't. You didn't even drive blind. the car, dude. I, it's, I didn't even think about that. I didn't. I didn't 
I only started it up for about 20 seconds. Yeah. And so uh, don't get a card voice from me very clearly. <laughs> yeah. I went from two used it's, cars it to was walking the into radio a that and was not the understanding a, point. Yeah, I'm not here to talk about how to buy a fucking car off a dealership. Yeah. Because that whole process for me was um, just knowing somebody that like yeah. did all the dirty work. So yep. my sister works there. And then her friend is the guy that sold me the car. And he made sure I was... Uh, hopefully, I you know he I definitely he seemed like it. He, he was, gave us, a good gave dude, me a pretty good you know? yeah. You know, I got a pretty good deal on it. Yeah, um, and you know my credit's a lot better now than it was last year. So that was another thing I worked on. Yeah, that shit. Uh, and I got a new car. It's a process, a man. Car. It's a process. <laughs> At a but price is right, so. do you like so the van? Like you had so much room to like put equipment. You have a like a sedan now. Like how is that gonna be for equipment? I'll figure it out. That's one thing I like when we were looking at the cars, but you seem like so like happy about the cars. Like I'm not gonna shit on like what he's. What, he's uh, what doing am I right gonna now. get like a van and SUV? Uh, nah, I mean the, uh, that's why I bought the Outback. I bought the Outback because it had like the hatchback, like, yeah, you know, length, and so I can put. I literally did put a bunch of shit in, and it's fine. Um, and it was also like I like compact cars, so it's kind of like it's that's not great if you're like a indie filmmaker just trying to like. You know, have yeah. all the equipment yourself loading into a truck, like a van, a car, without renting anything. Um, but that works for but me. But luckily, like, equipment now, I feel, is, like, it's getting smaller and smaller. Depends on what you're shooting with. True. I mean, lights are... T- well, lights, so definitely lights. I mean, after a certain while, you just, you can't use an Outback to, to bring equipment to a shoot, you know? Yeah. You gotta have, figure out more than one car, just buy a U-Haul. Or not yeah. buy one, but rent one. Rent one. one. <laughs> um, which is probably what I'm gonna have to do if it's, like, a bigger shoot, and then... I don't know. I'll figure it out. Yeah, I'll whatever, it. man. You know, it's a nice. Car. I'm happy. I feel like yeah. a boss. No, it's. I feel yeah. like a fucking boss in it. Like I'm. Uh, I blasted um, Gold Link's new album, Diaspora, today. I didn't even know he had a new record oh, out. So good, very, very good. When did it come out? Uh, it came like, out a few days ago, I think. Like, may, like I days ago. I had no idea that came out. And uh, when you so listen to, to this, out. this may be like way, way more dated. Depends on when we release this. So. I say days ago, but it probably is like you know, two years. <laughs> yeah. By the time this podcast comes out, it's going to be two years. <laughs> but uh, This is going to be a very dated <laughs> podcast. Just kidding. Hopefully, we're quick about this. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> um, but yeah, that album was great. I listened to that today in the car as I was like Uber eating. Um, yeah. Not real. I just did like two deliveries at the same time. Keep- DP and a delivery real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got it, you know. Um, so yeah, make some quick cash while I was bumping that album. It was amazing. You gotta listen I, to it. I've been listening to um like the Freddie Gibbs album that you like mm-hmm. been telling me about, That's good too. which you bumped in the car the other night. That's why I did it. Uh, that that song "Crime Pays" is fucking yeah, so dope. That's why I did. That's um, great. what's the other one? Bandana, think. or are you talking about Fetty? That album. Oh yeah, what's the one on Fetty? That's like. New Things, that's my favorite off of uh, Fetty. I don't know which song it is. Um, there was one that I was like, yeah, this is fucking dope. I feel like it was New Things, so that's my favorite, and I feel like you were um, dancing to that, so to speak. I mean, you don't dance, but you know, moving to that. Dancing, yes. That, I was dancing, dancing in, in the car ways, yes. to Freddie Gibbs. I'm just looking it up. Um, His song's coming out, too. I think in uh, the end of June. End of June. That's soon. He like he like drops an album like once a year. Yeah, he's been pretty consistent. It seems he's like he's been very consistent. Um, because he had like yeah. um like Fetty, but then he had another album like came out the same year. Uh yeah, uh, forgetting the name of it, which let me you look that up. Yeah, I'm just doing things, but yeah, we can keep talking about Freddie Gibbs. As I'm looking things up. Oh, Location Remote is the, the oh, song that's that a I good fucking song. Yeah, yeah. Well, It opens that's the, the album. First, yeah, that's the first song. Yeah, it's fucking dope. Yeah. Um, that is oh, really the cool. other album is just called Freddy. That's, yeah, with the, yeah. With the suit. And it came out the same year. Yeah. So. That was good. That was good, too. Thank God for technology. I can just look that up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No problem. Um, the, the video for Crime Pays. We talk about I have place? not seen any, like I, any of the videos. You haven't seen the video for Crime Pays? No. I sent it to you. <laughs> and you and I think the, this is a this is a, this is a frequent thing that happens in our conversations where it gets lost because like 
you I feel like you commented on. So you just lie to me when you like I send you shit. You just like act like maybe you I did. It. I don't know. I feel like that's I, what you I don't remember like. seeing it. Maybe I did see it, but um, what maybe I probably what, didn't. What happens in the video? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think happens in the video? It's it has very... something to do with crime, and that yes. it pays off. Ugh. So you didn't see the video. Yeah, I didn't see the video. Okay, so <laughs> the treatment for the video is pretty much zebra farm. Okay. It's Freddie Gibbs and like some sort of like Midwestern or Southwestern ranch um, where I guess he's funneling cocaine through a, a zebra farm that he runs and owns. Um, it's interesting. Strange because that's that a, sounds really that's strange. an interesting <laughs> concept, concept for a hip hop video for like like that's just not the, the typical location that you would think a, a hip hop video about crime being shot in. Um, and it's cool because like uh, there's like. The shots are beautiful. Um, I, I'm not sure what they shot with, but I should find out. Um, yeah, because that would be good for the podcast. I should have did some research on that. But um, the I I really want to know where the location was because they had like so like the the flat land, the high grass, and then they had like the mountains in the background, like just like beautiful like Wyoming or something. Mountain. It's got to be Wyoming. Yeah, it's got to be yeah. Wyoming. Um, cause that's, yeah, exactly. I, I guess I think of like Kanye West, that his album cover for yeah. Uh, like, yeah. So I, can, I think it's definitely Wyoming they shot him. Yeah. I think it's definitely, um, yeah, I, yeah, I think it might be, might be, I, I'm um, guessing it's Wyoming, but, um, the video itself is awesome. It's Greg, just, do you know, if, uh, Wyoming is green. Greg is the dude doing the camera and I'm going to give him a shout out. Is Wyoming green? Is that what the question was? Yeah, is it green? Like, is it pretty green there? Like, well, the video isn't green. He d- he's just giving That's me like a like a head nod. Like, I don't know. Um, the video, the color palette for the video is like green, like light browns, I think, and blues. There's a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. I could. I'll see him later, so I'll ask him then. But yeah. Let's shoot a video there. We yeah. can't afford it, but like we should do it. We could probably make something happen. <laughs> it can't be too cheap. It can't be too expensive to go to Wyoming. Who's going to Wyoming? I'm sorry. No but. one. <laughs> Who's going to Wyoming? How we already is, like. How much is the plane ticket? There? <laughs> yeah, we're already uh, like pissed off the I'm ten sh- people I'm that sure, live there. Yeah, I'm sure we can get an Airbnb for a good price in Wyoming. I'm just assuming here. Probably, yeah. I think rent is pretty cheap. Didn't your friend like go up there and make a whole bunch of money? Uh, well, Jake, right? he saved money. That's pretty much like, so I have a friend, Jake, um, who I'm doing a movie with. Uh, he li- lived in Wyoming for a while for, I think a year. Um, literally just worked like as like a dishwasher. I think that's what he did. And he just saved all his money. And so what he, he just doing? texted so me. So what is he I doing just, with it? It just came up. Uh, Saved a bunch of money to film this movie about uh, hip hop artists uh, in Lynn. So, I know. I'm just bringing it back. I know that, um, like, because I know you, you're a graphic designer, and you work with me with videos, and you've done some yourself. But how did you get into like this whole thing with uh, doing like a feature? And like, what was your role um, in that again? For the film, yeah. Oh, so it so I'm a producer on it, um, and also sort of like a creative art director, creative slash art director, because I'm doing a lot of like the website stuff, um, sort of like the aesthetic of the movie. Um, it kind of just like fell into my lap a little bit. Uh, I think he approached me because I'm a graph designer, but also like. I did a lot of film stuff earlier on, which did a lot of like filming bands and things like that. So, um, yeah, it kind of just happened. And what have, what have you done? So what has that kind of work been like entailing? Like what's in, like, what are you doing so far? For uh, so lately what I've been doing is like trying to figure out color palette. Uh, also mood boarding is really like a big thing. So I'm, I'm trying to, really hone in on the aesthetic of the movie and then yeah so give me give me a quick elevator pitch like what's happening of what's, like what's the movie about i don't want i'm in an elevator uh you gotta say it quick uh, i got billions of dollars what's it what's fuck. it about so 
it's a movie about this. It's kind of like sort of like how we're trying to let we're on the hustle of like mm. trying to like achieve a goal. Same as this movie. It's a hip hop artist trying to make it. Mm. That's like the the simplest like explanation of of the movie. So this fits perfectly, I guess, with your lifestyle because you're a hip hop. Yeah, and I think it, it. it, yeah, definitely like works in with like what we're doing. So, um, yeah, so I'm excited. Um, should be fun. I think we're gonna start filming in uh, September, October. So sweet. So you want to talk about how we know each other? No, I don't want to know you. We already do. Mm, how do we get true. to know each other? <sighs> how did we get to know each other? Did, yeah, like how did this how did this happen between you and I that we're like a kind of partners like a duo in crime, <laughs> sort of partners in crime? Uh, I don't. There was one day that like you were hanging out with John, our friend John Lee, and I would say that like someone brought me around. I think it was like maybe like Adrian or something. Could be Adrian. Could be Kevin. I feel like uh, it, Kevin, or yeah. Kevin. Um. But we were at John's house, and you were there. And I actually think, I think you told me this. You were like, I didn't know how to feel about you. He's like, I, you were like, not like, cool with me at first. You were like, sort of like, oh really? Yeah, you were. You told me this, think, uh, like a while back. But you were like, yeah, I, I kind of had like, I didn't know like, what, like who nothing, you were, it's like personal. Yeah, it was just like, yeah, I just kind of looked at this kid. He had like. Two snake bite ear piercings, oh, like piercings right here, uh, and it kind of just looked like a douchebag to me. Yeah, so I was like, I, "This kid's probably a douchebag." Yeah. Um, it just you looked like the douchebag to me. <laughs> That's a, I respect you. I love you, but I was yeah. like, "Man, this guy is either I'm kind of intimidated, you know." <laughs> um, I don't know if this guy's like in the like I don't like also I don't know much about punk rock music, but this guy's definitely like punk to me. I was like, I don't know what punk this guy's. Like gonna punch Dude's punk. Face. He's so punk, Dude's you know? just too punk. So for I was kind of just didn't know. I didn't know what to, to expect. I was like, yeah. wow, you know, like this dude's. Different. It's funny because like at that time I was like recording with Jay. Like I had like a studio in Lynn, and I used to record with Jay at that time, and that's how I met him, like Jay too. Uh, so it all kind of like connected, like mm. uh, during the same. Like yeah. again, it was like that's when I met you. Was that time well, was towards the end of it. Yeah. And I feel then, like, um, yeah, I mean, I, we definitely met, like you said, at John's house and I remember that whole thing. Um, but I don't know. I guess, I don't know how we really started the rabbit hole of somehow becoming business partners. I think it's just, I knew you did label shit. I never did. Yeah. I mean, shit. and I think it was, I think the official, like, let's do this was when, um, I always was interested in doing some type of thing with like, Hip hop artists. Yeah, I just assumed it was just gonna be music videos. Like, I'm just gonna shoot a bunch of music. Honestly, kind of same. I was like, I don't know. Like, I'd want to do something like in hip hop, but I don't know what. Yeah. Well, I knew. Um, I knew. Come on, you knew what you were gonna do. Yeah. I don't so know. This kid, I don't know. So man. he's not saying it, but this kid um, started his own record label when he was in high school. Well, towards the end of it. This. Come on. I was like, so I was like, I was like, com- towards the end coming of coming up on so eighteen, towards the end of high school. Yeah, you started this record label. Well, it's just like I'm that guy that everyone goes to for stuff like for music. So like, it just made the most sense to like start a label. And uh, again, it, for hip hop artists, they were coming to me for recording and you know graph design. Like, so it's just like, all right, why don't I just put all of this together and make a label. Yeah. And I, and I never, I would only consider doing anything label wise. If it was with somebody who wanted to do it, like yeah. and I knew you did. And so we, we knew each other since high school. Like that's where we met. And it made I sense. Kind of, yeah. I kind of just did video shit and I just assumed it was just going to be music videos for rappers. And then yeah. you were like, or I, I kind of saw this coming, but you know, one day, but then you were like, we should start a label hip hop label. I yeah, like, I I wanted to do it for a while and it was like this is my thing is like I think about something for a long time mm-hmm. and I'm like I really want to do this and 
same with the podcast. I was like, I, for like over the past like year and a half, I've been like thinking about the podcast. Uh, same with the hip hop label. I was working at a label, uh, like a punk indie label. Um, and I was like, I really want to do like something in hip hop. Cause it's like still friends with Jay, J two. Um, so it just made sense. I was like, dude, I want to put out his music. I want to put out like, like artists that I like, you know? Um, and obviously like you did videos and stuff. So I'm like, Edwin's like the perfect person to do this with because you like hip hop. You like talking about it. Um, we've definitely had awesome conversations before we even like made the label. So it just made sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I saw it as just an opportunity. So I feel like with videos and shooting videos, and this is kind of something I, I think about sometimes, but try not to like get in the way of like what I want to ultimately do. But I definitely have like, a uh, things within the hip hop that I enjoy and then things in hip hop where I'm like, I've, I'd like to be one of the people that sort of pushes the change in that direction. Yeah. Um, and so I like the, uh, the, the idea of running a record label. Where I can represent artists that I want to work with because it's like, yeah. I, on some level, I agree with what they're doing and I like, I'm backing what they're doing. Um, and like their content is something I, I, I love a lot. Yeah. Um, there's some, you know, as a, as a filmmaker, um, who's working with hip hop artists and that loves hip hop music. Uh, there's just I know some imagery that's like a little old and dated um, that I was just like there's definitely things I don't want to do even if it's for money yeah. and so for me the idea of running a record label sounded like a good one as a filmmaker because it's like I, it's an artist that I really on some level fuck with and I get to be in control because I'm not like I'm not just doing it for a paycheck I get yeah. to be in control with what the video is going to be about well, like I don't you know like I always yeah. I always tell people like uh, like they sort of like try to explain they want to know like what like us as a label like what we do, um, and I always tell them I'm like, yo, this is we're sort of like a label meets a creative studio, because mm-hmm. we do a lot of the creative stuff in house. Yeah, like we you know we do all the the videos ourselves, we do the graph design stuff ourselves, you know the album work, all that stuff. Um, it's like you know we have people that we work with all the time that do the audio stuff like we have an engineer that we go to we have someone that masters the the music like yeah we just sort of like put together like a team and yeah, yeah. so yeah we're so trying to, it's a work in progress yeah, we're man. trying to grow like, a little bit year yeah. by year we're taking it like it's like, yeah i feel uh, like every year it kind of like it gets a little yeah. better it gets a little like yeah i think like more like like real, I guess. Sure. Yeah. I think we're at the point where we're still getting there. Um, yeah. So we have essentially three artists on our label. Yeah. Um, four, actually. Four artists on our label. So we have Tron Pfeiffer. Um, we have Saint, although we haven't really released anything with Saint just yet. And that's why I say that. Yeah. Because we haven't. He's definitely part anything. of the family. But he's definitely part of the family. Yeah. We have one Mike who um, um, his album, Word to the Wise, is uh, an album that we're collaborating with them on yeah um in terms of releasing and uh, the imagery video wise stuff like that um and then we have j2 who we shot videos for and we've released stuff with but before yeah. he's kind of like our first artist he's like our yeah i mean flagship artist. like me and j2 were like friends through and through so like yeah he'll always be part of the label like yeah he's like he's he's fam yeah so yeah so that's kind of like who we have and so it's like a small we're just two people, so it's a kind of yeah. a small operation. And then we, like I said, we we work with people like outside people that do yeah. things for us. But um, yeah, uh, it's just me and you. Yeah. Um, and so, you want to talk about like money a little bit, like financing and like how, like what we do. Oh yeah, it's not fun. I don't recommend it. Uh, so we. <laughs> We do a lot of like the gig economy bullshit sometimes to like in you know again we do a lot of like freelance work but you know we have our own bills that need to be paid so whatever extra is like what goes to the label um so yeah it's just like 
whatever we need, we have to be like, oh, get to like do some fucking Uber Eats for like a while to like be able to like afford this thing and like, yeah, it's sort of like the label. It's it's always been a grind, you know. Yeah. So I'm very careful. We're not dudes with money that just yeah. get to have a label. I, We're yeah. it's like, working people that <laughs> live didn't come check. from families that have money. Yeah, live check the check, you know. Like, so, um, yeah. So I, you know, essentially what we're saying is, it's like we're very conscious of what we spend and we yeah. breeze to sort of make a yeah. Like we can't be like, we can't blow a bunch of money on like promotions and yeah. things like that. But it's like, but we can like make you a video and like and do things exactly that we, we can do. do. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a fucking pain in the ass to yeah. do it. Cause it, it definitely slows us down. Like we'll build a momentum, but then it's like, all right, we don't have money to do this other thing. So we have to wait. Yeah. And like, I feel like sometimes like with our artists, I feel like they have, they pay the price with that too. Cause it's like, all right, we could do this, but we have to like, can't spend money on this thing and like we have to like save money in certain areas well, yeah. so like I, I think there's also a reality check that they go through um when they're dealing with us because like they know that we're starting but i feel like we're pretty transparent about yeah that stuff i'm yeah. like yo we don't have money for this so but but the, what, you I'm know. Saying, what i'm saying is like they know that what we are we're not we're transparent so they know what we're yeah. doing so there's we know that we can't offer them all the services in the world and yeah. we're not this big old record label. Glomerate we're fucking Jam, label. You know, we're not that. Sometimes they think that. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they do. And especially yeah. when it's like, you know, somebody who's we've never actually met in person before and we talk yeah. to you, like there's that perception where like, oh, a label is trying to, you know, sign me. Yeah. And it's like even signing is kind of like a uh that's even saying that is I like of, signing is a weird we, thing for us because like we don't really do that yeah we don't yet sign. <laughs> not yet we don't sign and so we're a label and we have artists that we represent but none of them are under our contractual obligation we're not expecting any money yet until yeah. we get to that point our like our we do is we do distribution we, yeah. for them though our whole goal that is, is the thing have, that we do we have skills yeah we can help you using our skills to try to get you yeah like more known or out there more i.e film yeah um graphic design sort of social media marketing marketing, stuff that type of stuff and so at a at a certain point where we're both doing well or you're doing well and uh we're doing well because we're backing you we've we've allowed some sort of level of success to happen i think it's like it's a level of mutual like understanding but when you're when you have an artist who is also trying to get just grinding to try to stay uh relevant and you have a label that's trying to stay relevant. There's a mutual understanding. Like, there's no money involved. It's just a skill uh, 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 trade. So I'm exchanging yeah. my skills, and you're exchanging your skills, which is like your musicianship. And then we're gonna work together on something. And then when money comes, if it ever should come, I don't really care if it ever. This is I love doing this shit, so I don't care if it ever comes. Really, yeah. But I, if it, it comes, it comes. And yeah. I work hard to make sure that at some point we will we will get to that point. Yeah, I, um, like I want to do but this I, I won't, all the time yeah. if I can. I won't. I won't die if I didn't make a cent off of this. this is what I want to do. Yeah. And I got another job to you know. And I have, shit I have fun doing work this. Out. So yeah. You know, that's what um, matters to me. Is like this is fun. So and, yeah. and I like talking about it too. I like discussing shit. I guess maybe that's like a something to think about is like, it, it, are you trying to make, like, are you first? Of all, do you have the income? Do you have the capital to make something happen? Yeah, quickly? because or, music stuff is not cheap. Yeah, like well, people think like, like they could just like start a thing and it just happens. It, yeah. It's not. It's like, you know, like, dude, we have to pay for studio time. We have to pay an engineer. We have to pay people that like master the record um promoting is not cheap either like people think that like like oh you you just get your video on world star and it's not that he like we've done it and it's not as easy as people think it is it just costs money costs money that's why money talks that's why i feel (laughs) that's another reason i feel like why um like there's a certain type of hip hop music that's more prominent in the mainstream realm than there's other genres of hip hop music. What are you well, like? What are you talking? So I feel like, like are you talking about like, it's so like SoundCloud I'll rappers, you, no, like I'll, that type of shit, or yes, to to a certain extent. Do you think yes. that like? But I'm also talking about like how 
let's say for example if you are your everyday Joe Schmo blue collar rapper yeah how it's such a grind to even scrape up enough money to shoot a video for example so that that's not an option for you yeah but let's say because like I mean like hold on hold on to your point right. but let's say for example that you are uh you know selling a little bit of some some on the side <laughs> You know, and you got not saying you income. should, but just say no, just saying that you are. Yeah. You may have a little bit more money to spend on something that is just your hobby, yeah. whether it be buying equipment. That's, is that what you're shoot. against is like people doing? No, that or? that's not what I'm saying at all. Okay. What I'm saying is my in my larger point is like, you know, there's a lot of genres of hip hop music. There's a lot of genres of rap. Yeah. Um. I think some genres don't have the voice as other genres because they aren't able to get that capital like other genres are able to get because yeah. of what they do to get that to that point. So um, that's all I'm trying to say. I'm uh, like, if you're a rapper who talks about just like blue collar shit, yeah. and you're just a blue collar rapper that works at Dunkin' Donuts and fucking you know you make like you know twelve dollars and some t- you know pretty decent tip on a good day, yeah. You're probably not gonna spend that on studio equipment and fucking studio time and an engineer and all this bullshit. Yeah. But if you are a rapper who sells and shit, and this is not what I'm I'm telling you to do, but I'm just saying like it's just reality. If you are a rapper who has drug money, you may have some money to spend on that shit. And so yeah, what can, we're trying to do to sort of help, like, and I see that and we notice that. So what we're trying to do is make sure we give the voices to people who are also not about that type of lifestyle. But there's another alternative to that which is yeah. you know the, the more conscious rap the, the stuff that is a little bit harder to get out there because there's just not a lot of money backing it initially and so their voices aren't heard as much but if we're able to use our resources to make sure that the, this type of rapper who talks about that blue collar life is able to get heard just as much as this rapper who's talking about you know the you know money hustling women all that stuff and they've got the money to back it up here why shouldn't we push this rapper over here with what we have, our resources? Yeah. So that's at the end of the day, money's not that big of an issue because I, I love what I do, which yeah. is that. I mean, you know, I've expressed this a lot where it's just like if you're consistent and putting out content, that's really where we're sort of headed, I think, in music. And like, it's sort of like evened out the playing field too. Like a lot of, like, dude, you could literally like, rappers can like, do like a video on their phone and like do a freestyle and put it on, on the internet and it might blow up. Yeah. You're right. Being savvy. Yeah. Being internet savvy. That, that goes like remember, uh, th- I'm not going to mention the rapper, <laughs> yeah, of but I, I showed uh, a rapper to Edwin, uh, a rapper that I really liked. We both really liked it, That we, yeah. And we you were like, you were like, yo, I'm about this. And I'm like, yeah, it's fucking dope. Um, and then we like posted on Reddit and dude, the video got like 13,000 views overnight. It got 20,000 by the end of the whole run. And I, I no, remember in, in less than a week. The was, rapper yeah. posted like the next day like like something about like like thank you for like like checking out my video. He like, had no fucking idea what it was. No happening. clue we, how like, it happened. The only ones that knew was us. And we were but, laughing yeah. our asses like, off. Like, dude, we just got this guy 20,000 views. Yeah. You can't, like, you people pay yeah. $1,000. I'll to, never forget to that. To get that shit. And yeah. I'm just like, and like, I wouldn't even Because we to just, them. we were just fans. Like, yeah. we weren't, like, we don't work with this person. Uh, we're still fans we were of them. We're just trying to show them off because that's, yeah. that's part of, I guess, being, like, working in music is, like, maybe you don't make music yourself. Yeah. But I don't even think we had the label at the time. No, we didn't. No, we were just shit like it was that was in sort our of brain, the, but that yeah. was like kind of a thing that we did because we loved the music so much. Yeah, we were like just showing each other music yeah. and yeah, just being fans of hip hop artists like yeah. like yo, you gotta check this dude out. He's like local. And yeah. Such an awesome like story that I'm like so fucking yeah. cool. But it, that doesn't happen every day though. That's the thing. No, it doesn't. And it's just funny because it, it <laughs> It was like someone that we don't work with that that yeah. that happened and with. Funny. I think I think Reddit. But, if I'm not mistaken, I think Reddit also cracks down on shit like that because. We well, yeah, it's, it. they don't want it to be spammy, you know. Well, we can't. And yeah, I don't exactly. think we were like in that moment. We weren't <sighs> tough spamming or whatever. We were just like. Oh, I can. I remember the caption. We were spamming. It was spam. What what was the caption? I don't remember. I don't want to say. I was trying to avoid actually saying it because it's not great. <laughs> Like it, it's not a good like we're young, but also like it doesn't say it doesn't speak too highly of of the general population as well. Yeah, because I, I guess I'll say it now. I think it's been set might up as well. That way. So, 
the th- uh, the thing about this rapper is that he's an amazing rapper and a produ- a producer. And at the time, I think he was just mostly just focused on the rapping. And he was about 17, so I was just like, it was super impressed, especially at that time, especially around, in, in my opinion anyway, you can, uh, I could be stand corrected. I didn't think that the music around that time, which is maybe seven-ish years ago in Lynn, hip-hop music wasn't as good as it is now. I think now it's at a pinnacle. Yeah, I, I, think, I think there's a lot of and talent I, I even here, think there's so. more room to grow today, yeah. but like our talent level is definitely there. I think back then it wasn't as uh, pronounced, and yeah. you kind of have to like really look for the talent level around here. Um, and so this kid's like 17 and he's rapping like he's like a 30 year old veteran. Um, and he was really good. And so, um, but he was white. And so my caption was essentially, and this is like appealing to, cause there's that, yeah. whole, there, it really is that sort of happen like aspect of hip hop music where like, well, yeah, white, if you're white and you can rap, yeah. people will want to listen to you, which is like fucked up, but it's the truth. Like if you're white and you rap, people will like give you an extra ear just to like make sure that you suck. If anything, like, oh, yeah. yeah, this guy sucks. But if you're good and you penetrate that, like Eminem did, people will, like, you have a white fan base that's waiting for you, just yeah. waiting yeah. for you to own you. So um, that was kind of, like, my intent behind, like, the, the caption behind that post, which is, like, wow, I can't believe this 17-year-old white rapper. It like, was, like, like clickbait like, before clickbait oh, was, like, a word. Oh, total clickbait. You know? It was, the ra- like, a race. It was bullshit. Like, I will say that I wasn't too proud of it later on, but I was just like, this is total baiting through, like, racism. Yeah. Like, because people love listening to white rappers be good. And so my caption was, this 17-year-old white rapper is, like, spitting fire. Some crazy, like, bullshit like that. And it got 20,000 views, which speaks to the, the actual thing of, like... If you're white, will people listen to you more? I mean, that's more? how the internet works. Yes. You know, clickbait. So, uh, so. <laughs> not proud of it. And I apologize for that, but it got that it artist works, a lot of followers. Form, so. And that artist is like, I'm not to, not to just make him a white rapper. I, that's why we're not saying his name. Like, he's very, very good. But no, he's like, That he's was the clickbait bullshit that we, that we, I posted, and I regret it, but it, it got fucking views. It but helped him out. So. I think that Reddit, good for them, might be not good for them, depending on what your view on that is. Yeah. Stop allowing people to write shit like that, and they're just like, you have to just give the, the name of the artist and then the song. So, in terms of what the audience, if there is one, I bet you there's like, maybe your mom, one or two. maybe your dad, because your dad really likes both of us. I think Yeah, I think like you're a, a yeah. like, my brother, <laughs> you know, like according the way dad, he treats you, according like. your dad. But uh, aside from those two, <laughs> um, if there's anybody else listening out there, so what do you think they they need to hear in terms of like, what do what? you like expect? Yeah. Why does why should they come back to us? Um, what are we gonna well, have? Well, you're gonna have like you know artists from our label, also like artists that we just like that yeah. we don't. I wouldn't say we work with, but. Um, yeah, just like if if you want to see how we talk to like our like artists and yeah. things like that, like yeah, I think um, so we're definitely gonna start with, you know, just because it's easier to get, and also like we you should know about them also because we obviously know about them, we represent them. We're probably gonna start with artists from our label in terms of what they're doing, um, just getting to know them a little bit more and just yeah. like understanding like what like what they do musically and what what's different about them. And they're like uh, the process of like how they write yeah. music. Um, yeah. I always found that like super like fascinating. Like, yeah. Like J2, he, he'll like listen to a beat and just write to it. Yeah. And like, I remember he used to have like an iPod of just beats. He would just listen to all of those beats and write to them. Like while he was like at work. Such like, fucking cool like just a whole ipod of beats save save that for the next podcast yeah (laughs) yeah that sounds interesting yeah yeah we could definitely go more into that that's interesting Uh, um and so in terms of other people we're looking to have like one thing that as a filmmaker that i want to have is other filmmakers on this podcast and talk about like yeah just not definitely the technical aspects of like like what they like how they shoot their music videos and how they shoot just the general work because they they may just do more than just music videos sure um, but also the business, like how do they handle their business? How do they get their, their artists? Um, how do they get clients? What yeah. kind of money do they make? What issues have they had in the past? Um, and what things can they give in terms of advice for people who are listening, who want to do the same thing they're doing or yeah. I'm doing, you know? Yeah, um, definitely. And you know, that's just, I'll have my tips also, but I don't know everything. I'm a, I'm a student of the game. 
And so um, just having somebody on that level here also we're going to interview. You should definitely expect that. Yeah. Like I said, we're going to start with our artists, probably venture out to some uh, filmmakers that we know, um, also people within the community that deals with the genre um, that are so also behind the scenes, whether it be people who do events, booking, um, in case people want to know more also about like, booking. Also, like fans of hip-hop, too. I want, like, their perspective of, yeah. like, outside people that – aren't in the business, but they're fans of it. Yeah. Like what, what, like what's their take on like what we're doing? They probably fucking hate it. They probably fucking hate it. Uh, they probably think we're idiots, which we are. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, clearly very self-absorbed ones cause we're making a whole podcast on our bullshit. So. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, so if you, and you it's know, like self deprecating too. Yeah. So maybe that's what we'll, so. <laughs> trash and we'll just like tell people, you know, how yeah. much they hate us. Yeah. I'm in. Um, but yeah, we uh, essentially we have a lot more content coming that that is sort of the aspect of the the, the industry that we deal with. But um, one thing we're we're conscious of is trying to make it so it just isn't centric to uh, the music industry. Like we wanted this to be about just like going after a certain goal that you have or a certain yeah. company that you have in mind. Yeah. And these are things that may help you because you know getting a grant is not something that's just you know something you can do in one industry. Um, working with clients is not something that's just fit for one industry. Yeah, it's working with artists is also something that's just fit for one industry. So you may not do the things that we're doing, but you may be able to relate to the things that we're doing and can take something from it. And so that's that's kind of what we're trying to aim for in the in the podcast. Definitely. 